so this video is about compatibilism and sort of uh, explaining why might somebody be a compatibilist. So compatibilism is one of the three theories of free will that we're looking at in this class. Frankfurt is a compatibilist. We're also looking at incompatibilism, uh, which is Genet and Ekstrom. And then we're looking at the sort of no free will or hard, or hard determinist theories like Strassen and Paraboom. And so the basic thought is the incompatibilist says free will is not compatible or is incompatible with determinism. Uh, if you can't remember what determinism is, there's an earlier video, so go watch that. So the incompatibilist says you can't have free will and determinism. The hard determinist also says you can't have free will and determinism, so the incompatibilist and the hard determinist agree on this. And then the compatibilist is on the other side arguing against those two and saying, no, free will is compatible with determinism. That's why they're called compatibilists. They say determinism and free will are compatible. And so compatibilists agree with incompatibilists that we have free will, but they disagree about sort of whether that free will is compatible with determinism. Compatibilists say yes, and so they accept determinism. Incompatibilists say no, and so they deny determinism. The hard determinists accept determinism, but they deny compatibilism, so they say no free will. So uh, incompatibilism is interesting, hard determinism, no free will is interesting, but this video is about compatibilism. And so how does compatibilism work? And we've sort of already seen the kind of the two main components of compatibilism in the two Frankfurt articles we read. So the first component of compatibilism is kind of like a negative component. It says, here's the stuff you were worried about in determinism. Here's the stuff you thought would destroy free will, the reasons you thought they were incompatible. And we're going to show, oh no, actually they are compatible. These don't destroy free will. You don't have to worry about determinism hurting uh, free will. Uh, they can go together. They're compatible. And so where have we seen this? It was the first Frankfurt article that we read about the principle of alternate possibilities. So he says in this article, alternate possibilities and moral responsibility, that, oh, here's a challenge. You might think determinism is incompatible with free will because determinism makes it so that nothing could happen except what actually happens. So determinism means you don't have any other possibilities when you act. Everything you do is sort of set in stone by the laws of physics plus the initial conditions. So there's no other possibilities. And so you might think, oh, look, if there's no possibilities, there's no moral responsibility, there's no free will. And so Frankfurt denies this. He has this argument in this article where he says, you don't need alternate possibilities uh, to have free will. Why? Well, let me show you why the principle of alternate possibilities is false. So we can think up these examples where it's false and blah, blah, blah. And so uh, you can go back through and look at Frank's, Frankfurt's argument and things like that. I would watch the Q&A video about Frankfurt. But basically the thought is, here's the challenge from determinism. It rules out alternate possibilities, but it turns out that's not a problem, so we're good to go. We thought determinism was a challenge to free will, but now it's not a challenge to free will. It ruled out alternate possibilities, but now we realize we don't need alternate possibilities. So that's a sort of negative argument against uh, incompatibility. It's showing that they're compatible by saying, oh, here's what you thought the incompatibility was. You thought determinism ruled out alternate possibilities and so no free will. It turns out they're compatible. It does rule out alternate possibilities, but you didn't need those in the first place, so you're okay. So that's the sort of negative thing, and so there are compatibilist arguments for those. And then there's the sort of positive compatibilist arguments, which are sort of uh, trying to prove that we have free will even in the face of determinism by saying, here's what free will is. You've got free will, and it's compatible with determinism. And we saw this in the second Frankfurt article uh, we read Freedom of the Will and the Concept of a Person, where he gives us his whole theory of free will. Here's what it is to have free will. It's about having second-order desires and sort of acting on those second-order desi second desires and uh, doing the things that you want to want to do and things like this. And he says, number one, uh, this is the sort of free will that we do have sometimes. We don't always have this free will. It's not like we're always free in everything we do, but sometimes we're free. Uh, sometimes we achieve freedom. Sometimes we uh, will freely, and sometimes we act freely too. He discusses free action also in the article. So again, watch the Q&A about Frankfurt, uh, the second article, if you want more details here. But he says, okay, here's my theory of free will. And then you get to uh, the end of the article, and he points out that, uh, you know, my theory of the freedom of the will is 
totally compatible with determinism. Uh, there's nothing here that's incompatible with determinism. Um, I can't find the page. Oh, here we go. Uh, my conception of the freedom of the will, this is page 20, appears to be neutral with regards to the problem of determinism. So the thought is, okay, determinism true, determinism false, I kind of don't really care. I've just given you an account of free will that works perfectly fine, even if the universe is deterministic. So this is the sort of positive argument where he says, here, I'll give you a theory of free will and it's going to work just fine, even with determinism. And so if you put the negative and the positive arguments together, you get a good picture of compatibilism, which is, number one, here's the stuff you thought you needed to worry about, but no need to worry about it. And number two, here's a theory of free will and it's compatible with determinism. So uh, why would you think it's incompatible? So now we have compatibilism, basically. And so that's compatibilism. A lot of philosophers find it very compelling. So um, somebody did a poll a while back, about 10 years back, and uh, the majority of philosophers are compatibilists. Not everybody's a compatibilist, obviously. <laughs> We've read people from all the different camps, and so there's lots of people in every camp. But uh, compatibilism is something that often initially strikes people as very strange or confusing or completely nonsensical. Uh, one of the questions from the Q&A on Xterm, I think, just kind of assumed compatibilism must be wrong by definition. And uh, that's kind of a common position. And so I think it's really good to sort of get yourself to understand how could somebody be a compatibilist? How could somebody be like Frankfurt or something? What's compelling about this? And so we have the two Frankfurt articles, which are good examples of this. And compatibilism generally is versions of kind of those two strategies. Number one, rule out problems for free will from determinism. And number two, give an account of free will that works with determinism.